to Hong Kong now, where the trial has begun for media mogul and pro-democracy activist Jimmy Lai. He's accused of conspiring with foreign forces under a strict security law imposed by China. The 76-year-old was arrested more than three years ago during a crackdown on Hong Kong's pro-democracy movement. It was a day Jimmy Lai knew was coming. On August 10th, 2020, police made the media mogul watch as they raided the offices of his newspaper, Apple Daily. Earlier that morning, he was arrested on charges of violating Hong Kong's national security law. His newspaper was defiant. Apple Daily must fight on, read the headline. That fight continued only for another year, until Hong Kong's largest pro-democracy paper was forced to shut down. People queued to buy its last edition, which marked the end of an era for press freedom there. Lai himself walked free on bail, but it was clear that he was in the crosshairs of a regime in Beijing. He told DW News he would stand and fight. I was sitting with the ship because this place gave me everything. You know, I, I'm in debt to this place. I'm very grateful for what this what, what this place has given me. I'm 73 almost. So maybe it's a payback time. Jimmy Lai fled mainland China for Hong Kong at the age of 12. He began working on the floor of a garment factory and he ended up in charge of a clothing and media empire. Unlike many who rose to the top in Hong Kong, Lai chose not to stay quiet. He became a leading voice in the pro-democracy movement. For Hong Kongers, he is a hero, but Beijing sees him as a threat. In December 2020, Lai was sentenced to nearly six years for fraud. Charges his supporters say were politically motivated. He could now face a life sentence under the national security law. His family says the verdict is a foregone conclusion. I have no confidence um, that the trial will be fair in, 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 any, uh, um, in any form. There's, a, there's three government-appointed judges and uh, there's no jury. Um, the, the security minister boasted of a 100% conviction rate. Um, so so the, the, this is not going to be a fair trial. There's, there's, I, think, I don't think there's any uh, uh, um, doubt about that. China seems determined to make an example of the outspoken media tycoon, but it might only make him a martyr for Hong Kong's pro-democracy movement. For more on this, I'm joined by DW correspondent Phoebe Kong, who joins us now from Hong Kong. Good to have you with us. This is a landmark trial, Phoebe, a very symbolic one too. What do you expect from the coming days and weeks? Well, Jimmy Lai faces multiple charges of collusion uh, with foreign powers under Beijing-imposed national security law uh, by calling for international sanctions against uh, Beijing and Hong Kong officials. He also faces other uh, seditious publication charges related um, to his articles published on Apple Daily and also on other platforms. Um, so uh, Jimmy Lai denied all the trial, uh, denied all the charges, and will face an 80-day uh, long um, like hearing here like at the court building just behind me and uh, the other defendants uh, who are like um, former chief executive uh, ch former chief editors of Apple Daily uh, the newspaper founded by Jimmy Lai and also other senior management um, has already pleaded guilty earlier and some of them will um, testify against Jimmy Lai uh, uh, as prosecution witness so that would be one of the focus of this trial and uh, many see this trial as like a test to Hong Kong's freedoms and independence uh, uh, judiciary and also the press freedom because like Jimmy Lai is not only a media tycoon but also uh, like uh, a protesters and an advocate for democracy. So uh, a lot is going on and, and as we saw in the courtroom, Jimmy Lai appears in the courtroom like in a rather uh, peaceful uh, spirit, like he smiles, sometimes uh, grins and uh, wave hands to the public galleries and we also had a chance to speak to his wife who brought uh, his sons and daughters to the trial today that he said, uh, like uh, she said, she feels good. Um, she's happy to see Jim and I today. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned the charges there, but just as a reminder to our viewers, because he has been behind bars now for three years, uh, why does Beijing consider Lai to be such a threat? How did we get here? 
Well, the national security charges uh, Chima Lai is facing uh, could put him in jail for life. So this is uh, the most serious offences under the national security law. And Beijing has long uh, criticised Chima Lai as the so-called mastermind behind the riots and protests of, of Hong Kong, and that uh, he has been destabilised Hong Kong for decades um, like through his involvement in advocacy and also um, uh, through his newspaper, uh, which was once uh, one of the leading voices um, of Hong Kong press that is really vocal and critical of um, the Chinese Communist Party. So um, uh, Lai is really a significant figure and um, Beijing see his like as one of the leaders and one of the icons that they, uh, they that they has to crush. That they said that he's the guy like, behind all the chaos of Hong Kong throughout mm. the years. It's widely expected that he'll be found guilty. How is the international community positioning itself here? Well, the fact that Jimmy Lai's trial is also a high-profile court case on on international level, we have already seen um, that the U.S. government and the U.K. government uh, just recently uh, uh, called for Jimmy Lai's release very explicitly. It's probably one of uh, the first time that U.K. government did so, calling Jimmy Lai as a British citizen and calling for his release. And uh, like the, U uh, the, the uh, European Parliament and the Canadian Parliament, etc., have uh, released a similar statements calling for his release um, so uh, we are like observing like some reactions from the international community and and many see this case as like an icon and also something that reflects how Beijing is uh, coping with the Hong Kong situation at the moment and the fact that we see uh, you see me like now standing behind the barricade that Beijing is really uh, concerned about like the security and this is tells you how high profile this case is in Hong Kong. It's really the focus today. That's DW correspondent Phoebe Kong reporting from Hong Kong there. Great speaking to you. Thank you. We can now speak to Agnes Chow. She's a pro-democracy activist who recently left Hong Kong for Canada. Agnes, welcome to DW. So good to see you. You have announced you won't return to Hong Kong perhaps ever. Can you tell us why you made that decision? Um, I was arrested three years ago under the national security law in Hong Kong and my passport was being confiscated and I had to report to the police station regularly even I was not being charged even until now I was not being charged and so that's why in the beginning of this year I applied to the police that I would like to study my master's degree in Canada and after my application I underwent several times of interrogations and I was being forced to even to do something I don't want to do, like, for example, to write a repentance letter saying that I regret uh, participation of social movement in Hong Kong. And I was even forced to go to the mainland China for a propaganda trip. And these kinds of, you know, the trip and the letters, they are not something that is written in any part of the law in Hong Kong. Mm. So. And now I'm studying my master's degree in, in, in Canada and I decided not to go back in the coming December. Originally, I have to go back in the coming December in the, in the end of this month to for a report. But if I go back, there will be a high risk that I would not be able to come back to Canada again because mm -hmm. the police could always confiscate people's um, travel documents without giving any concrete reasons. And they could even um, require Quests require me to fulfill some of the requirements again, just like before, for example, to go to the mainland China again. So I, that's why I decided not to go back. Do you I feel safe in Canada now? And safely. Do you feel safe um, in Canada? I would say, yeah, I, um, I would say that, of course, I feel safer in Canada than in Hong Kong, but it's not 100% because um, there were a lot of news reports saying that there are uh, Chinese secret police in Canada, actually not only in Canada, but also in the United States, in Japan, in many countries. So um, I'm afraid that the, you know, the Chinese um, secret police would kind of um, do something on me, but still I came because I want to live freely. So that's why I would try to, I would do what I can do here. I would speak what I can speak of here. 
Jimmy Lai is the latest pro-democracy figure to go on trial in Hong Kong. You've been able to leave, but many people are still there. What's the situation like in Hong Kong for activists right now? Well, I would say under the national security law, there is no longer any room for any kind of opposing opinion against the government, and there is no longer any kind of freedom of speech. So Jimmy Lai's case is obviously one of the examples that even media has to be under the control of the Chinese government. And um, it's also a proof of a total destruction of our country to systems and um, freedom of speech. Mm. Um you, just like Jimmy Lai, were accused of colluding with foreign forces. What do you say to these accusations? Well, I would say that, like, to be honest, until this moment, I have no idea why am I arrested because of this case. So it is... So it is um, exactly how the Hong Kong authority um, suppress and, and, and intimidate political dissidents that they are um, making up accusations and they are using the national security law as a political tool mm -hmm. to suppress and stop people from telling the truth. Yeah. Under these circumstances, what does the future look like for Beijing critics like Jimmy Lai, like other activists that you know who are still there, um, what what does the future hold for them? Well, it's uh, it's hard for me to say. As a Hong Konger, it's, of course, it's very sad to see that Hong Kong is no longer Hong Kong again. It's very sad to see that our uh, one country, two systems, our freedom of speech, our rule of law are being destroyed by the Chinese authority. So, and uh, from my own experience and also from the stories of many activists in Hong Kong, we could see that Hong Kong authority is more and more adopting the mainland China style way of how to intimidate, how to suppress um, political dissidents and how they abuse their power. And this is what I really worried about. This is Hong Kong pro-democracy activist Agnes Chow. Thank you so much for your time. All the best to you. Thank you.